how children at a Hampshire school in the 1970s and 80s were given infected blood products. A public inquiry hears from survivors. More than 120 children at Trelaw Boarding School were infected with HIV and viral hepatitis. One of them recalls how they were told the devastating news. Went around the room and said, who's positive? You have, you haven't, you have, you haven't, you have. And um, it was difficult. And um, um, I was back in science by 10 to 2. Good afternoon and welcome to the BBC News at One. A public inquiry into how tens of thousands of people were given infected blood products by the NHS in the 1970s and 80s will hear today from former pupils and parents at a school in Hampshire where at least 72 students died. More than 120 pupils at Trelaws College, a school for disabled children, were caught up in what's been called the worst treatment disaster in NHS history. From 1974 to 1987, the children were offered treatment for haemophilia, but batches of the drug given to them were contaminated with HIV and viral hepatitis. Our health correspondent Jim Reid reports. It's a huge, amazing place. Beautiful. To come here as an eight-year-old, it gave just freedom, total freedom. Deep in the English countryside, Trelaws is still a boarding school for children with physical disabilities. 40 years ago, it was home to boys with the blood disorder haemophilia. In the 1970s and 80s, more than 120 young haemophiliacs were taught here. Of that group, at least 72 lost their lives because of a blood treatment they were given. Now a public inquiry is going to look in detail at what happened at this school in Hampshire. This is not a normal week. Half a century on, Aid, Richard and Steve have returned here. As students, they were given a brand new drug at the NHS centre on this site. Freeze-dried concentrate was sold to us as a miracle. We were told, if you take this, you will be able to live a normal life. You'll be able to do these things. You'll be able to play football, ride a bike. But we were never told the risks. In the 1980s, that drug, known as Factor 8 or 9, was often imported from the United States. Some of the plasma used to make it was contaminated with hepatitis and later HIV. At just 15 years old, Aid was part of a group of boys at the school, taken aside and told he was HIV positive. I quite tearfully, Doctor, went around the room and said, who's positive? You have, you haven't, you have, you haven't, you have. And um, it was difficult. And... Um, um, I was back in science by 10 to 2. I didn't even get the afternoon off. My friend went outside and literally went to the horticulture department, picked up a pot and threw it against the haemophilia centre wall. In 1983, HIV AIDS was not just untreatable. Those infected also had to deal with the stigma of the disease. Alec McPherson was the head teacher at the time. Now 86 years old, he has agreed to give evidence at the public inquiry this week. It caused them a lot of anxiety and a lot of upset, and, and it, it, it sort of built a, a rage inside them against, you know, why me and why, why has this happened to me and why have I got this, this dreadful thing? Of the 122 haemophiliacs who went to this school at the time, just 32 are known to be alive today. But when we come back, to this wonderful school and you know we've just lost so many people we we, we all ask ourselves why me why are why, we still why are we still here a series of hearings focused on the school are taking place this week as part of the wider inquiry into the use of infected blood products former pupils and their families want to know if more could have been done to protect the young boys involved we can speak to Jim now. Some really harrowing stories there, Jim. What exactly is this inquiry aiming to find out? Well, this is part, this week, uh, the, the focus on the school is part of a wider inquiry, which has already been running for two years, into the use of, of contaminated, infected blood products in the 70s and 80s. Now, that's thought to have killed 
uh, perhaps as many as 10,000, some people think even more people across the UK. So this week they're specifically looking at the case of, of that school, Trelaws. We had some opening comments this morning from the lead counsel to the inquiry, Jenny Richards QC. She said they're going to look into the treatments used at the school. Importantly, what information was provided to parents and children as, in her words, she said commonly no such information was provided. And also, interestingly, to the extent uh, to which any research was being undertaken at the school and whether that was, again, in her words, any driver to the treatment being received. So this week they're going to hear from six surviving pupils. Some people are giving evidence anonymously. Also later in the week we'll hear from a parent of two boys, both attended Trelaws, were infected with HIV and very sadly lost their lives. Important to say though that this, uh, this uh, what happened at the school itself, actually how a lot of the treatment was being take, taken place at the haemophilia centre on the site, which was being run by the NHS, not school staff. So we won't be able to hear from any of the clinicians involved, we learned today, because all have now lost their lives, they're dead. Okay. Jim, thank you. Our correspondent Jim Reid there.